Technology is everywhere. In fact, we're completely surrounded by it. Everywhere you look, there's a screen or computer around, ranging from small gadgets to massive data centers. We're now more connected than ever before, with answers to some of life's biggest mysteries being just a click away. And with this rise in connectivity comes an obsession with instant gratification. Movies and television shows are streamed right to your TV, socks you order are at your door the next day, and you're one tap away from having someone bring you a greasy cheeseburger you probably shouldn't be eating in the first place. While we scroll our Facebook timelines and purchase things we probably shouldn't, Linux servers all over the globe are working tirelessly behind the scenes to keep up with our demand. And it's a very complicated yet rewarding subject matter with all kinds of things to learn. From distros to desktop environments, there's quite a bit of ground for new students to cover. As for me, back in 2002, I became obsessed with Linux. There was something special about it for me, and it was one of those things that really connected with me. Very quickly, it became my favorite technology. Since then, I've spent a great deal of time learning it, which would later inspire me to create this YouTube channel. And during my journey so far, I've come to really enjoy the process of creating tutorials, reviewing distributions, and covering all kinds of other Linux-related topics. But who would have ever thought that this channel would hit the 1 million subscriber milestone? Although I always knew that this channel had potential, I wasn't sure exactly how high it would ascend. But in July of 2025, Learn Linux TV has hit 1 million subscribers. And none of this would be possible without you guys, my audience, and also my supporters, and everyone else that's helped me along the way. Thank you guys so much for helping me reach this very important milestone. This is awesome. So to celebrate, I figured I'd create this video to not only talk about this particular milestone, but in addition to that, go behind the scenes and show you guys what goes into making a video for Learn Linux TV. I'm also going to talk a bit about the history of the channel, as well as some of my favorite moments. So join me as we dive deeper into the world of Learn Linux TV. First of all, what exactly is Learn Linux TV? I figure we should spend a moment to define the channel itself and talk about its mission. But before we get into that, we need to address the elephant in the room. What the heck is Linux? Well, to most people, it's an operating system. Whenever we think of an OS, the ones that immediately come to mind are Windows and Mac OS. Most people have heard of those, but another option is Linux. Linux can be installed on both computers and servers, and like I mentioned during the intro, it has a very prominent place within the latter. Linux is very adaptable, and that's why it's found in all kinds of different things, such as smart home devices, smartphones, and heck, your TV probably is even powered by Linux. But technically, Linux is a kernel, not an operating system. A kernel is the core of any operating system, not the operating system itself. Windows and macOS both have kernels too, and you could think of them as the brain of an operating system. Still, even with this distinction, whenever people mention Linux, they're almost always referring to it as an operating system. And to be fair, Linux is presented to end users as an operating system, so for that reason, if you refer to it as such, I won't correct you. In fact, Linux is generally installed and used as if it were an operating system, with the Linux kernel itself and some additional software being combined together to form what's called a distribution of Linux, and many of those exist. Each distribution, or distro as we call them, cater to a specific audience. We have more than a handful that you could replace Windows or Mac OS with, as well as those that cater to a very specific audience, such as system administrators and even gamers. And I've covered quite a few distros on this channel. For those of you that are brand new to Linux, well, now you know what it is. But what exactly is Learn Linux TV? It's probably fairly obvious by the name, but this is a YouTube channel that's 100% focused on covering, well, what else? Linux. 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 Of course, that's a surprise to pretty much no one. But what's the goal of Learn Linux TV? What's the mission? What is this channel trying to achieve? Well, to understand the goal, we need to understand the problem. The truth is, learning Linux can be quite difficult. For starters, the overall ecosystem is very, very large, and anyone attempting to learn it might get a bit nervous when they realize its depth. And along the way, there's a lot to figure out. For example, what's a desktop environment? And how does that differ from a window manager? 
What's Kubernetes? What terminal commands should I learn? Is a terminal even necessary in the first place? Why doesn't my Wi-Fi work? Why is Linus Torvalds mad at NVIDIA? I could go on. There's just a lot to learn. Worse, despite how complicated Linux can be, learning itself can be hard, especially for those with a learning disability. Sometimes the quality of instruction might make things harder on someone, or they may be overwhelmed while trying to figure out what order to learn things in, or even what to learn at all. Sometimes people can get discouraged and, unfortunately, give up altogether. Anyway, now that we understand the problem, we arrive naturally at Learn Linux TV's number one goal, to demystify the world of Linux and make it easier to learn, all while having some fun along the way. As for me, when I first started learning IT, I found the process quite difficult. The quality of the instruction at the time was very low, in my opinion. Most of the books were very dry and boring. And colleges just didn't do a good job of preparing IT people for the jobs that they would eventually have. In fact, I was quite offended by the overall quality of instruction at the time I started. So I decided to do something about it. Since I was a huge fan of Linux, I decided to create tutorials on YouTube to cover both easy and complicated topics, with the focus of each video being to break down each concept into logical steps in a way that's as easy to understand as possible. To accomplish this, I've created countless videos to help you make sense of all kinds of things, with real-world examples and hands-on activities that aim to reinforce your learning. Of course, Learn Linux TV doesn't only produce tutorials. I always felt that it was important to cover Linux as a whole, because understanding all the key players and how they fit in within the ecosystem is very important when it comes to navigating the community. That's why my channel is also known for distro reviews, opinions on Linux-related news, and a ton more. And the best part of all of this for me is that my content has helped people all over the globe. It feels so amazing to be in a position to create something that so many people have found value in, it's very humbling. To say that it means a lot to me would be an understatement, and I know that it's meant a lot to you guys too. But in addition to creating high quality learning material for you guys, another important goal for me is that every video looks as good as possible. And for that reason, I put quite a bit of time and attention to detail in every video to make everything look as good as possible. I wanted to make sure that I present Linux in the best possible light, and although I do feel that I do have some room for improvement when it comes to video quality, it's been for quite some time a very important focus of mine. And the reason why I put so much work into the production quality is not because I want to be competitive or anything, as I'm not really trying to outdo anyone else. The actual reason why I do put so much work into the production quality is because Linux itself has no marketing firm. In fact, content creators like myself represent the only marketing team that Linux has. So that's why I think it's important that we all do the best job we can. And sure, it's not like Linux is hurting for popularity, as it's found in data centers all over the planet. But when it comes to Linux competing with desktop operating systems such as Windows or Mac OS, if we don't popularize it, then no one will. For that reason, I feel it's important to create the best content we possibly can to help ensure that we elevate the Linux platform as a whole. And to help with that, I decided to leverage a splash of special effects within my videos. Apparently it can't be that fast if it's taking... How? How? How is this possible? Wow, okay, this is interesting. After all, if I can manage to hold your attention, then that gives you a greater chance of learning something. The difference between raw footage and final edits is quite large. And what you're seeing on the screen right now is what raw recording footage looks like when I pull it from my recording PC. This is literally what I see when I record. And this is what it looks like after I apply my special effects. I figured it'd be fun to show you a before and after shot. And the thing is, this goes to show you just how much work I put into each and every video. And over the years, I've grown to really enjoy the editing process. And this is not something that I thought I would be interested in. In fact, earlier videos on the channel were all done in one take. I was that oppositional about editing. I didn't want to edit anything. All I wanted to do was, you know, talk in front of the camera and teach you guys. I really wasn't interested in editing a video. But later on, when I finally had a chance to sit down and learn how to edit a video, I ended up really getting excited about it. And just like most things that I get interested in, I sometimes took the editing to an extreme. In fact, sometimes I decided to play around with the edits and just have fun. And I did that by creating a few April Fool's videos, which ended up being a guilty pleasure of mine. 
With the first April Fool's video that I did, I decided to have a bit of fun with a distribution review. In that video, I titled it to imply that I was reviewing the best Linux distribution, which actually ended up being Hannah Montana Linux. And believe it or not, that's a real distribution, something that you can actually download. This was a joke distribution at the time, so I decided to feature it in the video. And it resulted in a few laughs, so I guess it was worth it. Later on, I created a video where a smart speaker takes over my studio, locking me in the closet. I sworn I just heard something. What the heck? Did I just lose power? To do that video, I programmed a Mycroft device to accept a dialogue script, recording its speech, and then using it in the video. So I decided to install Debian on one of Jay's laptops. I don't think he'll mind. Wait a minute, did somebody say that they were wiping my laptops? Mycroft would later appear as a special guest during one of my distribution reviews, but sadly the company behind Mycroft went out of business and the device is no longer available for sale. So what's your favorite desktop environment? I don't need a desktop environment. Command line for the win. Okay, so he's one of those people. Got it. I did have a lot of fun with mine, though. You spin me right round, baby right round like a record, baby right round round round. The shenanigans continued the following year, where I decided to review a fake distribution that I came up with that goes out of its way to tell you a dad joke in several places across its UI. I even had some guests appear on that video, and it was a lot of fun to produce. I just found two large bumps on my car battery. I had to get them tested. One came back positive. Hope it's not terminal. My favorite April Fool's video so far is the most recent one as of the time I'm recording this video. In that video, I showed what might happen if Linux takes over the desktop market. I even had a surprise guest appear, myself. And in this video, we're going to talk about the year of the Linux desktop. And what we're going to do is start with, hello. Well, I've been trying to get your attention. In that video, I played two characters at the same time, a parody of myself, as well as a version of me from the future. You have the actual SSH key to DistroWatch? Yeah, it's been on GitHub the entire time, and, well, no one noticed. That guy. It was incredibly challenging to produce, but it was also the most fun so far. Okay, you are... I am... Um interrupting this video. Yeah, about that, this video bombs. Okay, you are, I am interrupting this video. Yeah, about that, this video bombs. Really? Yeah. That f***ing algorithm. I even went a bit too far when it comes to the B-roll that I used, even going as far as creating a fake version of the Canonical website to announce that the company was being acquired by Microsoft. Of course, I was portraying an alternate future. However, you never know. That could happen. So, like I said, I really found myself enjoying the editing process. Again, that's really not something that I thought that I would like. But, stranger things have happened. Another thing that I discovered that I liked through this channel was vlogging, filming on site. The thing is, I'm often heads down editing videos and it takes a very long time to do, so I don't really get a chance to get out as much as I would really like to. However, anytime I did get out to film videos in a different location, I found myself quite enjoying the process. The first time I ever shot a video on site was when I was invited to System76 headquarters. In fact, so far I've been invited there twice. That was an amazing opportunity for me at the time, as I got a chance to see the inside of a Linux-related company that I've been buying products from for quite a while. During the second time I visited System76, the company has since grown to now have their own factory, and I got a chance to see their entire manufacturing process. I definitely had a ton of fun hanging out with the crew over at System76, and I hope to do that again someday. Another highlight of filming on location was when I was invited to 45 Drives in Nova Scotia. These guys make some serious servers that definitely stand out. While I was there, I had a chance to check out how they build their servers, and I also had a chance to chat with their team. I produced a few videos during that event, and I even gave a presentation on Linux adoption and what's required to further it. More recently, I was invited to film an inside look at a real data center in Chicago. The building that I filmed in had some incredible history of its own, and it wasn't just any data center. The building that I was in is what's called a carrier hotel, which is a term to describe a data center that's more or less a central hub with various telecommunications providers converging in that same spot. 
and the company that invited me there was Big Scoots, which specializes in WordPress. While I was there, I had a chance to chat with James, their COO, who also shared his wisdom and talked about his experiences with system administration. Meanwhile, I was able to show you the actual rack so that way you could see a real data center, what it actually looks like, instead of that picture that might be in your head that resembles something from the 1995 film Hackers. As a result of filming on site several times, I discovered that I really enjoy the vlogging process. I'm hoping to get out more and film in other locations more frequently, which is something I'm definitely planning for the future. Anyway, over the years, there was a lot of hard work and determination that went into making this channel what it is. But along the way, I also had a lot of fun and I'm still having a lot of fun to this day. But who would have ever thought that a YouTube channel that I started in the basement of a Waterford, Michigan house on a budget of just $175 would later grow to achieve 1 million subscribers. This is absolutely incredible. Now, Learn Linux TV has grown to become one of the largest sources of Linux knowledge available. And in light of the success of this channel, I figured I would go over some incredible facts regarding Learn Linux TV. First, videos from Learn Linux TV have been viewed almost 55 million times as of the time I'm recording this. In addition to that, another interesting statistic is the fact that content from this channel has resulted in more than 8.4 million hours of watch time globally. And the fact that such a huge number of hours have been spent listening to me yammer on and on about Linux is quite surprising to me. And here's another interesting fact. Back in 2002, I was taking a Unix class at Mott Community College in Flint, Michigan, when a teacher walked in one day and mentioned that he was going to be teaching the first ever Linux class at that college. I signed up for the course pretty much immediately, and that's when I discovered Linux. If it wasn't for that one chance encounter, this channel, and even my entire career, might not exist today. And this channel itself has had a huge impact on my life. It's not just the impact that it's had on my audience, although that's a big part of it. But as Learn Linux TV grew, I also grew as a person. It seems like just yesterday when I started this channel in my basement well over a decade ago. Since then, I've grown quite a bit in terms of my skill set, and also I learned more about myself and who I am as a person. Whenever I look back on my earliest content, I feel that there's a completely different person in front of the camera. And in a lot of ways, that's true. But one of the constants in my life has been my love of technology, and that passion drives this channel to this day. When I start to look at the future, I've covered quite a few Linux-related topics on the channel at this point, but there's still much more ground to cover. Even as I continue to cover the essentials, and also the advanced topics as well, existing technologies are being refined and new concepts are being invented on a regular basis. So there's certainly no shortage of topics, and the best is yet to come. And with all that said, thank you guys so much for helping me reach 1 million subscribers. There's still all kinds of Linux related topics that I need to cover, like I mentioned, and I don't think that I'm ever going to run out. So it's really cool that I get to enjoy the process of making Linux related content for you guys with no sign of it slowing down anytime soon. And of course, there's going to be all kinds of videos coming up, everything from, you know, tutorials, distribution reviews. I have a lot planned. But in the meantime, I wanted to thank you guys again for helping me reach this milestone, and I'll see you in the next video.